All right, so everyone, the first of all, today's the last day of lab um, for NX section. So there won't be a lab next week. Um, and so this is last week's class. Yes, Aaron? That's what we're doing today. Today's lab 13. So um, we, so the due date for this lab is would be the same as if there was a lab next week. So just make sure you get it in by Wednesday at 10 or whatever of next Wednesday. But we won't have a lab. Um, uh, so that's, there, are there any questions about that? It's pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing is that the lecture tomorrow, did Dr. Jensen mention what we're doing for the lecture tomorrow on Tuesday? Um, okay, so um, we're just going to we're just going to be talking about CFD, what we're doing today in lab on Thursday, which is tomorrow, right? Yeah. So um, if you go into the course documents on the website, um, if everyone's looking at the join.me or on the on the projector, um, in the course documents, and if you go to lectures, um, there's a new file called Appendix A. Um, so this is um, actually an appendix from a textbook that we use that talks about computational fluid dynamics. So your assignment between today and tomorrow before lecture tomorrow is just to read over this um, because we're going to talk about it tomorrow, some of the, some of the basic points of it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it may not make perfect sense all at once, but lecture tomorrow is going to be pretty, pretty straightforward. We're just going to talk about this. It probably won't take more than like 15 minutes. So if you go to yeah, course documents, lectures, it's called Appendix A. Um, so make sure you have, have that read by tomorrow, and we will just go over it um, in class. I'm just going to be there talking about it. So, Are there any questions about that? Okay. And, and Dr. Jensen mentioned um, about the, the final that we will be having, the written. There is no practical final, and it's just a week from tomorrow on Thursday in class. It will take an hour. So then when we have our scheduled final times, which is actually when we're giving our presentations in, during finals week. Any questions about that? Okay. There's no point in presentations. Yeah. assignment to ask Yeah, so without, um, Claire, without uh, the audio, I don't think we can do the presentation. So um, have you had any luck in getting it up till now? Yeah, try if you're looking at. It'll do nothing. Yeah, we're going to need an audio with it to explain what's going on. Um, if you go to tools options, have you tried this already? And go to audio settings. Hey. Hello? I heard some. I don't know if that was you, Claire, but I heard something. So tools, options, and then just check your microphone, see what's here. See if that's set up at all. So maybe that's just off. OK, we're just going to, all right, so we'll move on to the lab then. Um, OK, so today's lab is, where is this? So let me open up the oops, TCC. Okay. So today's lab, we're going over computational fluid dynamics, and we're basically just going to do a simple um, fluid flow problem. We're going to actually start in NX, and then we're going to go take that into hypermesh because uh, it'll be a lot easier to mesh everything in hypermesh. And then we're going to take that into Fluent, um, which is ANSYS's solver, to do a, 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 um, a run the solver of the fluid flow. So you'll end up with something that looks similar to this picture here. So here's something very important I want everyone to pay attention to. This is going to save you a lot of time and effort. On the website, there is, um, you have the lab, you have the tutorial, and there is a file that is the... Uh, 
It, it's, it's, a car, it's a car shell that you can use if you want to. You are welcome to use that one for demonstration. To you'll, you'll get the points for the lab if you use that one. Or if you want to use your own, you can kill two birds with one stone. You can um, do the lab because there's only uh, for this lab there's only one submission. You turn in one CFD analysis. It can be the one that we give you, the the shell that we give you, or it can be your own. So if you do the one that we give you, you'll get the points for the lab. But if you do your own, you'll get the points for the lab, and you can use that on your final presentation because that's from your car. So we would suggest that if you have a shell, if you have um, this sketch of, of what of the of what the flow is going to go over that you use your own so that you can already use that for the final presentation so you don't have to do it twice does that make sense any questions about that okay so for this lab though I'm just going to use the one that's on the website that you're welcome to use if you want to use that one um, so the tutorial um, it begins by talking about um, I'm going to open this up here so on this one Alan, uh, the, who was a TA from last year, did a great job making this tutorial, and he explains how to make a um, make a section of the car and basically get a a cutout of your shell at a certain point. So for this lab, like we can, um, you can just use the the sketch that you used for the middle of the car, but if you want to, you can take slices going along the edge from the middle and then maybe a sixth of the way out. To the edge, and in theory, if you if you take a lot of these slices, you can get a good feel for the three-dimensional flow over your car, even though it's not um, you, you're doing slight like you're doing a two-dimensional flows, but on different sections. One at the very middle of the car, one a little bit closer to the outside, another one a little bit closer, a little bit more until you finally get to the outside edge of the shoulder of the car. So if you were to do multiple ones, then you can combine them, sort of, or look at all of them and see how it's going to flow all the parts of your car. Um, so that's what he explains here. The part that he gives that we have on the website that I'm going to use today already has, um, it already is the simple, uh, 13 in class. It's, it's just the, the sketch already. So he explains that once you make the, once you get your, um, once you get the sketch you're going to want to get rid of these lines down here and just make a solid block out of it just a straight line on the bottom which you're going to want to do make sure it's it's one um, enclosed sketch so the one that we have on the website is already like that it's already enclosed so we're not going to go over how to do that um, so if you need to do that for your own refer to the tutorial um, okay and a couple good guidelines by the way when you're doing this is for the box um, in the tutorial uh, number seven it shows the car kind of flying in the middle of a big box There's a lot of space on the top and on the bottom however you'll get better results if your car is just slightly just above the ground because the one that's shown here um, number seven is kind of showing a car flying through the air with air flowing above and below but we really want something that's right above the ground Yes, thanks, Jared. It represents the ground of the car. So as you can see in our box here, this represents the ceiling, and this represents the ground, and this will be the where the air flows in, and this is where the air flows out. And Dr. Jensen suggested that a good rule of thumb is to have at least one car length in front and at least two car lengths behind the car so you can see the flow going over. You don't want the box to be so small that you're gonna, you won't be able to see much of what's going on. So the first thing is once we have this sketch here, um, and the box, we make it an NX because it's a lot easier to make to draw all that geometry in NX. Is we're going to want to make export an IGES of this model. So it's pretty simple to do that if we just say start export um, IGES and we want to export it to class. Okay. Okay, so, and we want to make sure, we don't want to export all the curves, services, solids, we just want to export curves. And, um, and we don't even want to do drawings either, just model data. Um, so if you export it then, it'll create that IGES. We're then going to grab that IGES in HyperMesh, and we are going to, um, 
mesh it from there. So now it's 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 exported it in NX. So we don't need to use NX anymore. Now in HyperMesh, when you open it, it's going to ask what user profiles you want. Remember this, when we did the optimization, you had to make sure you selected OptiStruct so that it did the optimization. In this case, we're going to be doing CFD. So make sure that CFD is selected. Um, once again, if, if you forget to do that, you can always... Um, you can always go back to that screen by going to... Let's see. If you go to Preferences, User Profiles, we'll bring up that same menu again. So we want to be in CFD. Um, we're, we're in a new part already, so we're just going to import <clears throat> that IGIS. So if we look for it, here's the IGIS I just created. Open, and let me get rid of this one. Okay, and I'm going to import it. <clears throat> and I noticed when I did this, at least for this part, um, I got some extra geometry over here. Uh, that's not even what I want. Well, let's try this again. Yes. Okay, so here's one uh, once I import it here. And, right, so there's all my, just the geometry that I want. Um, so if you get some extra geometry and you're able just to delete that, then that's okay. I, I dealt with, I came across that problem when I was doing this. Um, so, now that we have this, it's like this. <clears throat> um, the, the, another note that I've noticed is that, especially when we import this into, into ANSYS, ANSYS by default, I believe, um, let me just check this again. By default, ANSYS had the, this, it go, the air comes in on the left and it goes out on the right. And so if you can make sure you do everything that way, um, we're, we're later going to revolve this so that it is facing that way. So it's it's face like this. This is the this is the the standard orientation with the left being the input and the right being the output. So okay, so we want to create some new components over here. Um, so I'm going to create component and I'm going to call them so wall <clears throat> and I'll make it green. I'll make another one called body. This guy red and inlet. This guy be yellow. Outlet and box mesh. And he said, make sure they have no card image. Um, so now I have all these new components. Um, and now we're going to create a line mesh that represents the box around our car. So you can go to Mesh, Create Line Mesh. Um, you can also get there by going to 1D Line Mesh. So it wants us to select the line. So if we just select each of these lines, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and I measured this thing, I think, is about 35 inches. I measured it in NX. Um, and so we're going to make the elements about... Too, el too big and that should make about I don't know 12 elements or so and he says make sure that your element um, configuration is set to plot so once we select those four lines and we say mesh it's going to bring us to this screen then we can still modify how many we want so on the on the left he said it's he says it use an element size of about 1 20th the length of any um, box edge so this one there are 25 so it's split in 25 parts. That looks pretty good. There's only eight on here. So if you click on the button, if you left, left click on this, it will create more and more elements. And if you right click, it'll create less. So I'll put about 20 on here and about the same on the back. And this has space, so I'll put a few more. Okay, so now that I'm ready, then I hit return, and then it will make that line mesh, um, which are one-dimensional elements. So... Um, now we want to do um, the same for the car body. So if we um, zoom in here and we want to select these lines and the plot and then the element size, I'm going to put it at half. And oh, okay. And if we mesh that, then it gives us this. So we want to add some more in here to make